Hello guys, so here we are doing our part two of our Crown versus Church lesson um, and today we are going to be looking at murder in the cathedral. Okay, so please write the title down, Crown versus Church part two, murder in the cathedral and your lesson objective is to examine the murder of Thomas Beckett and its consequences. As always, guys, we are just going to do a little bit of a flashback on our previous lesson. So I would like you to just have a very quick think about these questions. If you pause me now and then when you have had a think about them, press play and I will go through the answers with you. OK, so who became king in 1154? And the king in our story that we're looking at is Henry. So he was King Henry II. And his very good friend was Thomas Beckett. And which important religious job did he give his friend in 1162? King Henry made Thomas the Archbishop of Canterbury in 1162. Now, the reason that the two men fell out, well, that was because King Henry wanted um, Thomas to let him change the uh, church courts. He thought that the way that the people in the church were punished when they committed a crime was too soft and he wanted to punish them harsher, but he didn't have control of the church court. But if he put his friend uh, into the role of archbishop, then he could get his friend to change how the church courts were run. Um, and when he actually asked him um, if he could do this, when Henry said, hey, Thomas, look, I've made you archbishop. Uh, can you now get the change the courts? Thomas had took his role as Archbishop so seriously, he was very religious now, and he turned around and said, No, sorry, Henry, I'm not doing it. So they had a really big fallout. Um, and it was actually so bad that Beckett left England and went to France. And he stayed there for six years. All right. Um, now uh when he came back, um, he was really, really cross because a lot of bishops had helped Henry while he'd been gone. So the first thing that um, Thomas did was he sacked all of the bishops. He said, no, you helped Henry, you know, go away. You're, not, you're no longer part of the church. And when Henry found out about this, he was really, really cross. So going on to our last bullet point there, where did our story finish? It finished by him saying, is there no one that will rid me of this troublesome priest? And those knights that were listening nearby heard him say that and they thought, well, we will. We'll go and do that. So where did they set off to? They set off to Canterbury. And why? Because they planned to murder Thomas. All right. So Thomas Beckett was murdered by the four knights in Canterbury Cathedral on the 29th of December, 1170. Okay, so just after Christmas, 1170, if it had happened today, it would have been a massive news story. I'm sure you can imagine, guys, it would be huge. It'd be all over the, the TV. But what I'm going to do, we're going to read through this imaginary TV report. OK, all about the death of Thomas. And then there's going to be a task for you guys to complete as we go on. So the next two slides that come up. They are the slides from last lesson about the friendship between Henry and Thomas. Um, I've just put them in because you might need them for when you come to the task, but you don't need to look at them now, but you might need to come back to them a bit later. So that's why I've popped them in now. OK, so I'm, there's going to be no narration on those next two slides. I can confirm the news that Thomas Beckett, the man in charge of religion in England, has been hacked to death inside our most important cathedral. I can also reveal that the four men officially linked with the murder are knights and were apparently acting under orders from King Henry. The knights, Reginald Fitzurse, William de Tracy, Richard Brito and Hugh de Morville, have fled into the stormy night. If they really are Henry's men, this will be the most sensational story of the century. I have an eyewitness. His name is Edward Grimm, a monk who claims to have seen it all. What can you tell us, Brother Edward? Well, it was truly awful. I'm still shaking with anger and fear. The murderers entered this house of God in full armour and with their swords drawn. Some of my brother monks had tried to bolt the doors to keep them out. 
but the Archbishop ordered the doors to be reopened. He said, it is not right to make a fortress out of a house of prayer. In a crazy fury, one of the knights yelled out, where is Thomas Becket, traitor to the king and country? What did Becket do? Becket stood in front of his attackers and said, I am no traitor and I am ready to die. The knights then grabbed hold of the archbishop and tried to drag him outside in order to kill him. Becket clung to a pillar, realising that his time on earth was nearly over. He bowed his head in prayer and made his peace with God. The murderous knights brought a sword crashing down on Becket's head, nearly chopping my hand off as it passed. Then another sword slashed down, again at his head, but still Becket stood firm in his prayers. The third blow was swung with such force that it knocked him to his knees. As he knelt, a fourth and final blow cut off the top of his head. That sword smashed into pieces on the cathedral floor with the force of the strike. Did the knights then run away? No, these evil men weren't finished yet. One knight put his foot on the holy priest's neck and scattered his blood and brains all over the floor. I couldn't bear to look any more but Brother William said he saw one of them scooping Beckett's brains out of his skull with his sword. The last thing I heard was one of the knights saying, let us away, this fellow will get up no more. With that, they disappeared into the night. This news will shock the country. The big question tonight is, the knights claim to be acting on King Henry's orders, but how will the king respond? Okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed that news report. I thought I did a pretty good job. I think I'd make a pretty good news uh, news presenter. Um, so just a couple of quick pictures for you to have a look at. Obviously this happened, you know, almost a thousand years ago. Okay, so there aren't photographs, there, there aren't picture evidence. There are lots of paintings that depict what happened at the time. And a lot of that is based on what our witness Edward Grimm said. Okay, he was a real monk, he was really there. And he did write down his account of what happened after the murder. All right, so that's where we take a lot of the knowledge um, from what we think happened on that night from. So you can see from that picture there, all right, um, you have got the four knights there. You have got um, Thomas on his knees because he's praying. That's why he is looking up. All right, and they've clearly struck him with his uh, first blow there, you can see. Um, the picture on the right. So we're really, really lucky, guys, because obviously we live very close to Canterbury. In fact, I live in Canterbury. So for me, it's really, really close. Um, and I've been to the cathedral lots and lots of times. Um, and that is part of the reason why Canterbury is such a touristy city. Lots and lots of people come to the cathedral because it is a beautiful building. Um, but, but also this this history of, of Thomas Beckett being murdered there is, is really interesting. So this picture here is from the cathedral. OK, and um, this is the altar. So the white uh, sort of square thing with the uh, um, grey uh, tabletop looking thing that is actually where Thomas was murdered all right so that is the actual spot and you can see if you look really closely on the floor there it says Thomas on the floor okay um obviously it's changed a lot since it happened but it was in this small little room a lot of people and a lot of films and things about the murder of Thomas Beckett they have the murder happening in the main part of the cathedral if any of you have ever been there but that's not where it happened okay um he certainly didn't pray in the main part of the cathedral. He had his own sort of private prayer chamber, which was sort of down underneath. Um, and then obviously they've put up the, the swords there. And it's really, really clever because if you look in the picture, you can see the cross in the middle because obviously it's a, um, he was a religious man. It's a religious building. Uh, and then at the end of the cross, there are two swords. But the way that it is lit, you can see with the shadow that it makes four swords representing the four knights. Okay, so this is where we come on to the main task for today. And you can see that because I've put the photo um, picture there, because this is the one that I would like you to send me. So I just want you to retell me the whole story of Henry and Thomas. Okay, um, I've put there the bullet points of things that you need to make sure that you talk about in order. So start by talking about their friendship at first. Um, when and why Henry made Thomas the Archbishop, how Thomas acted when he became the Archbishop, why they fell out, where Thomas went to, um, what happened when he came back, and then Henry's rage, okay, and his famous quote, will no one rid me of this troublesome priest? Who was listening to that and where did they set off for? And then what happened during the murder? 
So this is quite a tough task, guys, but I wouldn't have set it for you if I didn't think that you can do it. So you have got my news report that you can go back and look, look at and listen to, all right, which tells you all about the murder. And then if you go back a little bit even further in the video, you will see those two slides there um, from last lesson, which, which talk about um, Henry and Thomas's relationship before. So there's plenty of information there to help you, okay? But take your time on it and do your best. Okay, so now you've written out your story and you're clear on what happened. That isn't where our story ends, okay? So we need to look at well, what was Henry's reaction when, when this came out? OK, so for now, I want you guys to make a hypothesis. And remember, a hypothesis is where you make a guess on what is going to happen based on the information that you've got. OK, so how do you think Henry would have reacted when he was told about the brutal death of Thomas Beckett? OK, I want you to think about what you already know about him. And there's that gift there to help you. All right. Um, to help you decide on what you think his reaction is going to be. So hopefully some of you guys managed to to guess that actually Henry didn't take this news very well. All right. Um, he was actually horrified and he was absolutely devastated and he burst into tears when he heard the news um, that, that Thomas had been killed. So you have to remember, although they'd fallen out, they had been really good friends. OK. Um, and so much so that he'd made him the Archbishop of Canterbury. He trusted him that much. And now... His former friend was, you know, lying on the floor of Canterbury Cathedral with his brains all over the floor. OK, so he was really, really upset by the news. And he hadn't exactly ordered the knights to go and kill Thomas. OK, he'd said it in anger. And we are all um, have done that before. You say something that you absolutely don't mean. But the problem is, once you say it, you cannot take it back. So as soon as he said, will someone rib me of this troublesome priest? Those four knights thought, yeah, we will. And they took it as an order. And that wasn't what it was. OK, he was just saying it in anger. OK, um, he was really worried about what the Pope might do. He thought the Pope might excommunicate him, which would cause really big problems. Um, so he knew that he really needed to say, to say sorry in a really big way. OK, so what he did was he rode from London. All right. To Rough Common. Now, Rough Common is a little village outside of Canterbury. OK, and back then it was the sort of main village before you got to Canterbury. It's about three miles from Canterbury. All right. Um, so he rode to Rough Common on his horse. And when he got there, he walked barefoot. OK, and you can see on that little map that I've put there, that is the walking route. Um, and it says it takes about 40 minutes. OK, but that's walking down roads. Now, a thousand years ago, a lot of this would have just been fields. A lot of those houses in the middle wouldn't have been there. All right. So it, it's very easily an hour's walk, I would say. OK, so back then. So he is doing that barefoot. All right, barefoot. And we know in this is, guys, he was killed in December. So even if Henry had done his walk in January, you can imagine how cold that must be. OK, so he's walking barefoot from Rough Common to the cathedral. Once he gets into the cathedral or into the cathedral grounds, he then gets on his knees and he walks on his knees, which is very difficult to do anyway. Um, if you guys try, have a try, walk around your living room five times on your knees. OK, it is not very easy. Um, and this was a stone floor that he was walking on as well. So not very nice to, to um, go on on your knees. Um, so he walks on his knees to the spot where Thomas dies. He then allows the monks in the cathedral to whip him. All right. And that is what you can see in the picture there on the right hand side. So you can see him there. He hasn't got his shoes on. He's on his knees right at the spot where Thomas died. And the monks are whipping him. And that is what is called penance. So he is saying sorry for what he did. OK, he then spends the night there on that stone floor. So he sleeps there. And actually, the Pope does forgive him. OK, so it was a very big show of I'm sorry and it, it worked. Now, the knights, um, they weren't killed, they weren't executed or anything like that, but they were sent on a crusade, which is um, where you go uh, to the Holy Lands to fight a war. All right. Um, and it was very, very dangerous and none of them survived the journey. So they were sort of sent out of the country um, away. So 
And that's the end of that lesson, guys. Um, I really hope you found it interesting. What I would have loved to have done, and you know, I, if it's possible, I'll, I'll try my best to do it. But you can go to Canterbury Cathedral and they do tours on Thomas Beckett. So you get to see the spot where he died and they show you where Henry walked on his knees. And it's really interesting. Um, if we get the chance to do it, then I'll see if I can arrange it. Um, we will be starting a new unit uh, next lesson, which is going to be on the thing that you've all been waiting for, which is the plague. So we will be moving on to look at the plague. So I will speak to you again soon.